I changed as a person, as a mom, I changed that day. Tina Estepar has returned to Chicago in yet another attempt to bring justice for her child. She rustles through a folder of papers detailing the devastating 2011 sexual assault on her daughter, Stephanie, who was just 15 at the time. Estepar says her daughter's abuser was a neighbor and family friend who was nearly twice her age. He was supposed to take her to his daughter's uh, cheerleading competition, and um, they never went. He had her in the room, uh, in the basement, in the bedroom for three hours uh, with his two-year-old son in the room watching. The neighbor was ultimately charged and convicted of misdemeanor battery instead of a harsher crime. There was lack of evidence, so they had to go with what they had. The crime, though legally considered sexually motivated, slipped through what Estepor describes as a loophole in the system. Her daughter's abuser was not required to register as a sex offender in Illinois. We had asked the state's attorney to register him on the sex offender registry. The judge said that in the state of Illinois, battery is not considered a sex offense. Estepar says this incident illustrates how current state law can leave children vulnerable. It's like reporting a crime. If you do not report the crime, that person is free to reoffend again, whatever they're doing. The state of Illinois is doing the same thing. They're hiding the crime of what the perpetrator did. Since the incident, Estepar has gathered more than 300 letters from law enforcement, school, and park district officials in support of a bill that Estepar calls Stephanie's Law. Stephanie's Law known as House Bill 816, would let judges decide if an individual convicted of sexual battery must register as a sex offender. The bill has more than 70 sponsors, but still has not been passed into law. More than 29,000 people are listed on the Illinois Sex Offender Registry. The public online database shows where registered sex offenders live. Those on the list are banned from being within a certain distance of schools, parks, and other areas frequented by children. State Representative Mark Batnick, one of the co-sponsors, also has other concerns. Under the current database, sex offenders are not classified by the severity of their crimes or their risk to the public. Clearly all sex crimes aren't the same. Uh, looking at something on a computer is certainly different than attacking a minor in a park. Um, which is different than, you know, two teenagers who, who do something consensually. And that is an aspect of the law that needs to be looked at. Carol Nastekis of Oak Forest sees the problem from a different point of view. She fears those with intellectual and developmental disabilities, or IDD, like her son, are vulnerable to being labeled as sex offenders in cases where they are also victims. He was coerced by a neighbor to participate in an act with an underage female. So at which point he was arrested with the neighbor and prosecuted. And he ended up uh, on the registry for 10 years. Because her son has IDD and is unable to care for himself, and due to the sentencing, her husband and son had three days to leave their home and move away from the female victim in the neighborhood. My son does not understand any of what's going on here. So in court, he didn't understand what was happening. You know. Carol Nastekis and Tina Estepar are two mothers on opposite sides of a complex issue victims of a system that has failed their children. I don't want anyone's child to go through that. If I can help in any way so they're protected, that's my goal. That's what I want to do. That's what we all should do.